All right, so this is part four called ro Rotational Dynamics. Uh, so when we learned dynamics before, we learned that dynamics was the study of forces. So now we're going to study the, uh, the, we're going to study forces that cause things to go uh, rotationally or, or in a circle. So uh, <clears throat> just like uh, regular acceleration is proportional to force, angular acceleration is proportional to the net torque. So you put, apply a torque to an object and it will change the angular acceleration. Just like the Newton's second law, but now it's uh, in a circle or uh, in a rotation. So if we take Newton's second law, F equals ma, uh, and then we uh, we apply the ma, uh, we uh, we change the acceleration. So acceleration is equal to alpha r. We learned that in kinematics. So we're replacing the a with r alpha, and then we multiply both sides of the equation with r. Then torque is produced right here. So the net torque is equal to the mass times the radius squared times the angular acceleration. Um, so which means that uh, torque is directly proportional to ang uh, angular acceleration. Um, and so Newton's second law of rotation is the sum of all torques cause this I A. So I this mr squared is called the rotational inertia. Uh, so when we label it I. Um, and this is, uh, this is for a single mass rotated on a string. Um, it's actually called, the I is referred to as the mass distribution. So in linear motion or in Newton's second law, we had a single point mass uh, that's accelerated with a force. Well, now it depends on where the mass is located. And so we refer to the rotational inertia for that. Um, if an object is made up of lots of masses or lots of balls on a string, a mass on a string, um, like a disc or something, then we just add all that up. We don't actually have to do that. Uh, it's been done for us by uh, mathematicians. Um, I depends on the... I depends on where the mass is located. Don't know how to get rid of that thing. Uh, boogers. Okay, so it depends on where the uh, where it's located. <clears throat> um, this is the formula that you're going to find on your formula sheet, where it says the angular acceleration is equal to the sum of all torque over I or and then they condescendingly call the sum of all I, uh, or sum of all torque, net torque. Uh, but you already know that. Okay, so um, there are various types of rotational inertia. We just learned this top one right here, uh, mr squared. And that's for a thin hoop um, that goes around sort of like a ball, you know, on a string or something like that, or... Uh, where the rotate the axis of rotation is right to the center. Um, there's also the thin loop that's rotated where the axis is this way, and look how that changes. That changes the uh, the moment of inertia or the rotational inertia, sometimes referred to the moment of inertia. It changes the rotational inertia a lot. Um, you do not have to memorize these. We are mostly going to use this thin uh, hoop formula, the mr squared. Uh, sometimes we may use a solid cylinder um, uh, that is one half mr squared. So either they'll, they'll use a thin hoop or a wheel or something like that. That's what this is going to be. Um, they're going to use this moment of inertia or this one sometimes, but or they'll give you the value or the calculation for it. Um, you won't have to come up with these nor memorize all those. So don't worry much about them. You'll see how they work in examples. So let's see. This first example is what torque is required on a hoop. So we have this hoop uh, that has a radius of 1.5 meters and has a mass of 5 kilograms. 
and we want to give it an angular acceleration of 2 radians per second squared. So we have to apply a torque. Uh, so a torque is a combination of, remember, the force uh, times the radius. And so we're going to find the radius of that. So we're going to take the formula we just formed, the Newton's law for rotation, which is the sum of all torque equals the IA. Uh, because it's a hoop, we know what I is. And because we know what uh, the angular acceleration wants to be, we can plug that in. Uh, so we're going to use mr squared for I, and we're going to plug in the numbers. 5 kilograms for the mass, uh, 1.5 meters squared for the radius squared, and 2 for the radians per second squared. Do that calculation. Pause if you need. And that comes up to 22.5 meter newtons for the, the torque to supply that hoop with an angular acceleration. Um, what force would be required perpendicularly to the hoop? So now we're, we want to figure out what the force is here in order to make this angular acceleration. Uh, and so we take the definition of torque, um, and it's going to be perpendicular, so we don't have to worry about the sine uh, of theta. And we just put, we're just going to solve for the force. I did that algebraically, or you could plug in the numbers here and then divide. So we take the torque of 22.5, we divide it by the radius of 1.5, and that comes out to 15 newtons. Um, so that says that 15 newtons is applied at this radius, and it will cause this hoop to have an angular acceleration of 2 radians per second squared. So this Newton's second law of rotation, uh, sigma tau equals I alpha, um, uh, is useful in problems like this. So we have a block of mass. This is the hanging block of 7 kilograms. It's hung from a pulley. And the pulley has a radius of 0.15 meters and a mass of 2.5 kilograms. And we're going to try to find the angular acceleration if I equals 1 half mr squared. So see, they're giving us the uh, rotational uh, inertia there. Uh, so on this problem, see how we want angular acceleration. Hmm. Well, that comes right from uh, Newton's second law. We can calculate this A. All we have to simply do is know what I is and know what the torque is. Well, the I is given in the problem, so we're going to Put that one half mr squared, and uh, don't be concerned with the difference between the capital M and the small m. It's just a notation. It means the same thing. And same with the r, and capital R and little r. Um, so we have all the the numbers for that. So we have m uh, as the mass, and we have r, and we're looking for the angular acceleration. So all we have to do is calculate the torque. Well, let's think about this. So we have this hanging mass pulling down because of gravity, and it's on this circle, so we want to know what torque is applied to that. So we need the force, and we need the radius. Well, the, the radius is given in the problem, is 0.15 meters, and the force is the weight of the mass that's hanging down, because that's going to pull down and apply a force to the edge of that pulley. So we simply have the radius of 0.15 meters times by the, the weight of that 7 kilogram mass. So that's 7 times 9.8 meters per second. And so that calculation comes out to 10.29 meter newtons. Okay, so now we have the torque. And so we have the torque and all the other uh, values except for alpha. So we can plug that in. The 10.29 equals 1 half 2.5. Now, we're only using the 2.5 there because that is the mass of the object that's rotating. That's what uh, this site is all about. So the torque comes from the, the mass that's hanging, and the object that's rotating is what we calculate with the, uh, the rotational inertia there. And so then, then times point, the radius squared. Uh, so we're going to do the algebra on that. I'm going to take the 10.9. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And then I'm going to divide by 2.5 and divide by 0.15 squared. 
Well, you can do that calculation and see what you get. That comes out to about 366 radians per second squared. So that works out pretty well. Um, this one, we had to calculate that torque. But just try to keep the masses uh, separated. Uh, uh, the M in the, in the uh, rotational inertia is what rotates, and in torque, it's what the force is. Okay, so that's the end of part three. So uh, you've got some problems to do on that. Um, uh, if you have any questions, contact me in the usual sense.